When I first started keeping fish back in the 1990s, the one thing I really struggled to get my head around was the whole aquarium nitrogen cycle. Back then, we didn't have access to Google or to YouTube, and finding the answers to our questions meant talking to people in our local fish store or reading the information in books. In this video, I want to share my knowledge and experiences of the nitrogen cycle to help others who are newer in the hobby wrap their heads around it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm a fish and shrimp breeder based in the UK. So what exactly do we mean when we say the nitrogen cycle? Well, in the wider context, the nitrogen cycle is essentially a food chain created almost at a microscopic level. So microorganisms and plants and algae grow and they're consumed by fish and shrimp and snails. And when those fish and shrimp and snails go to the bathroom, their waste is in turn consumed by microorganisms, plants and algae. And so the cycle continues. However, when aquarium hobbyists talk about the nitrogen cycle, what they are typically referring to is the conversion of fish waste, which is high in ammonia, all the way to nitrates, which are far less toxic to fish. So let's break down the nitrogen cycle and see exactly what that means to us as fish and shrimp and snail keepers. So when our fish and shrimp go to the bathroom, their waste is high in ammonia. And ammonia is essentially highly toxic to almost all of our aquarium inhabitants. Now there can be other sources of ammonia in our fish tank, and this includes uneaten food breaking down or bits of organic matter such as as dead fish or plant leaves that are breaking down in the water column. Even at very low levels, ammonia in our aquarium water can quickly prove fatal to our fish and shrimp. Now, pretty much the only reason we can successfully keep fish and shrimp in glass boxes in our homes is thanks to the presence of two naturally occurring strains of beneficial bacteria. The first strain of beneficial bacteria is known as Nitrosomonas bacteria. This bacteria's sole mission in life is to consume ammonia and convert it into the somewhat less toxic nitrite. Now nitrite unfortunately is still toxic to our fish and shrimps, although they can typically tolerate it in slightly higher levels than the can ammonia, even marginally elevated levels of nitrite will quickly prove fatal to fish and shrimp. This is where our second beneficial strain of bacteria, known as Nitrobacter, comes into play. Nitrobacter takes the nitrite in our aquarium water and converts it into the far less toxic nitrate. Luckily for us, our fish and shrimps can typically tolerate nitrates in surprisingly high levels. There are various different numbers banded around the internet. Some say 20 parts per million nitrate is the maximum, some say 40. Others say you can easily go to 100. It very much seems to vary by species of shrimp or fish. Sadly, there aren't any naturally occurring bacteria that will deal with the nitrates, although there are some specialist filters on the market. For the majority of us, there are only two realistic ways we can reduce our nitrate levels. One is through growing lots and lots of live aquarium plants, because as aquarium plants grow, they typically absorb nitrates from the water. However, it's very unlikely anybody would grow enough live plants in a single aquarium to absorb all of the nitrates, which is where the second technique comes into play, which is regular partial water changes. For the vast majority of us fish and shrimp keepers, the best way to lower the nitrate levels in our aquariums is to carry out regular partial water changes. Now it can be very tricky to know exactly how much water to change because each aquarium will be different depending on the stocking level and the number of live plants being grown and even the volume of water itself. But typically numbers between 10 and 25% are banded around. Common wisdom dictates that if you change between 10 and 25% of your aquarium water each week, you will naturally keep the nitrate levels under control. This is typically where I find myself in my own fish and shrimp aquariums. Although in my fancy goldfish tanks, I do tend to change up to 75% each week because I do keep those tanks overstocked and fancy goldfish do tend to eat a lot and create a fair amount of waste. 
Now, of course, there's no way we can actually see the nitrate levels in our aquariums just by looking in the water. But what we have to do is get ourselves a good quality aquarium test kit. Most test kits can test for ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. And typically we also can test for pH if we wish to. Personally, I find growing lots of live aquarium plants to be one of the best ways to keep my nitrate levels down. But I also carry out regular partial water changes. If you want to know more about water changes in a shrimp tank, why not check out the video linked on screen? Thanks for watching.